and are standing. Well, some say they have every right to, to, to say no. Well, in this case, they don't. If we remember something that is written from the very beginning, and the prodigal son was all about that, before the feast was the return, we have not announced since our birth our return. We have not formalized our return, and there's a way to formalize our return. And this is called the pronunciano, pronunciani restitutum, the pronouncement of restitution. And again, a thanks goes out to Regan Reedy, who we haven't spoken to for a while, who also uh, discovered this. Maybe not with the same insights, but certainly saw that this was an important part to announce our return before we move forward. Now, I'd like to go through this. Uh, I didn't say at the start, by the way, of how long we'd go through before questions and answers, and I hope uh, you accept my indulgence, no pun intended, that uh, we spend uh, the next uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, on uh, the, this and the ecclesiastical deed and the change in procedures before we move to just questions and answers, because there is a lot still to get through. So I've just opened up the pronuntione, uh, so pronuntio restitutum. And I'd like to go through this to explain some of the mechanics to you so you can see the power of it. So the opening you've probably seen before in different deeds, but I'll go through it again. Whoever has eyes, let them see. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Let all those present and future be witness to the following memorial and record of event of our public pronouncement of restitution and our humble prayer to the divine creator and all heaven and earth. Now what I say before about indulgences, indulgences are created by a prayer. Now how do you create a prayer? Well you say it's a prayer. You either speak it or you say it. It's the same as a deed. How do you convey property? Well you convey it by using gift, grant, convey. Same thing. Also memorial, past tense, and record of event. Again, public announcement. Number one, let it be known to all that upon the sacred Eucadia day and time, so on, also known as Roman day, the living flesh known as name, also known as trust recipient number, did return as a competent living man, and you will change that if you're a woman, having reached majority to the land known as so on, to the state known as so on, and the suburb known as so on, and to the plot known as so on. You can't return in the temporal realm unless you return to a fixed location. That's logic. You have to nominate a fixed location. It's why whenever you've seen the documents that, that uh, uh, medical practitioners can issue, which is proof of living status, you need to say where you live. You just can't say, I live. You have to say, well, where do you live? So we've announced our return. Number two, let it be known to all that the justice of the divine creator has absolved us and forgiven our ignorance and wasteful behavior. We did pray and confess as an act of true contrition in the same manner as the prodigal son and received absolution in full through our solemn remittance from the treasury of one heaven by our sac sacred sacrifice and seal. Now, what the hell did we just say then? Well, let me explain. Firstly, we're saying, just as we've been forgiven in heaven, which is a standard doctrine of all Christian faiths, just as we've been forgiven, we have now uh, prayed, we've confessed, remember, this is the sacred ceremony now, we're now describing that we have actually uh, completed the processes of the sacrament of penance as defined by the Roman canon law. We're defining it here, the same procedure as a court case. And we're defining a reference in the prodigal son. We've returned, we've apologized, we've returned, and in the past tense, we have received absolution in the temporal. In full. And our remittance, our balance, is the payment in full recognized by the treasury through our sacred sacrifice and seal. And what do we sacrifice when we seal our uh, pronuntio restitutum? Well, we sacrifice our blood. 
the same manner, in the same tone and doctrine of the Catholic Church and the Anglican Church in the belief, the apex of the entire global financial system, of a, of a treasury full of credit. So we've balanced the books. There is no more debt. They can't say we can't remove you from the rolls because uh, there's an outstanding debt. They can't say, well, you have no standing. We have balanced the books by our seal. And then we're clear. They curse us with certain words and we reverse them with certain words. Whereas, number three, whereas we were lost, we are hereby found. Whereas we were abandoned, we are hereby returned. Whereas we were as if a minor, we have now hereby reached majority in mind, spirit and body. And whereas we were once incompetent, we are hereby fully competent to administer our own affairs of a state. Very powerful. Very clear. There can be no dispute. They have nothing to hold on us. Now let's finish the job. As we have returned from the dead, we tell them, we know what you've done. But we do it in a way in, that honours the concept. Okay, you say we're dead. Well, we've returned from the dead. We're redeemed. As we return from the dead, no office nor officers possess any lawful rights or our consent to continue as administrators on our behalf. Full stop. Therefore, whether they had acted, past tense, through an office or of custodian, protector, steward, keeper, guardian, attorney, in fact, or any other title. We've just told them that we know the game. We have hereby nullified and voided from the time we were mistakenly assumed to be lost, dead, abandoned, minor, and incompetent. In other words, ab initio, from the date we were born to the present day, we have nullified every action they've done on our behalf. Every action now. And they cannot claim through any action or any presumed consent that we're going to play this game anymore. Five, as for any assumed filial claims of the state over us, let it be known to all that we hereby disavow the state having any filial rights over us for the first time. We disavow for the second time and we disavow the state has any filial rights over us before the divine creator and all heaven and earth for the third and final time. Have a nice day. Now, it doesn't require them to say, yes, thank you very much, we agree. There's no clause that says this deed is executed from the date it's sent. Our seal does it. And we have now a witness to your left and to your right and the letter rogatory uh, which does need to be refined slightly, which will be refined in the next 24 hours. And thank you for your patience in terms of proving why the witness is on the left and the right. Well, I hope you agree that is a very powerful and historic act. And it needs to go to the most senior positions in your country. Let's not pussyfoot around anymore. Don't worry if we don't know exactly who's who who is the custodian in their system, who is the protector, who is the steward, the keeper, the guardian, the attorney in fact, or any other title. It's no, we're not going to play pin the tail on the donkey here. We know that we have a prime minister or a president. So clearly they get one copy. We know the attorney general, pretty, pretty certain is going to be the attorney in fact. So they should get a copy. The treasurer, well, certainly the treasurer is, is dealing with rights. They certainly would be dealing with abandoned property and lost property. Kind of sounds like a keeper of the rolls and most vital statistics offices uh, are dealt with either the Department of Agriculture or the Department of Health. So the Secretary of Health is probably a good one to deal with. So four rolls is fine. I know there's five touch points, but four rolls is, is fine. So that's the first one. Now let's look at how this changes the nature of the ecclesiastical deed. So let's go down and let's click to step two. And let's go through an ecclesiastical deed poll with the changes. I'm just going to have a quick drink before we get into it. Okay. 
Okay. So I've opened up the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll, the updated. And let's go through this. Mercurium Divina. We, the divine immortal spirit, expressed in trust to the circumscribed living flesh known as, name, have hereby given life and personality to the following memorial and record of event. So it's now past tense, we're making clear. Through our sacred irrevocable deed of ancient valid form, sealed by sacred polex and agreement to the conveyance and terms pronounced herein. Polex. Deed polex. Sounds like deed pol. Well, it is. <clears throat> we put that in there. Because a number of letters came back from a number of you, from lawyers and judges, that don't even understand Latin, couldn't even be bothered to understand Latin, and said to a number of you, flat stick as a lie, oh, you don't put a thumbprint on a deed poll, you sign it. What rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Poll, deed poll, comes from thumb, thumbprint, Latin, pollex. So we put that there so that there is no idiot, stupid responses from the kind of people you send this to. One, first, we did annex here to in full our pronouncement of restitution. And two, second, we did annex here to in full the sacred treasury remittance, that's a remittance again, of our live born record and certificate of title from the great register and public record of one heaven as proof of superior title against any other claim, title, and record. They're not de dealing now with just some funny piece of paper where they say, we don't know what you're talking about. Go and read your law. Go and read your foundation. Go and talk to a Jesuit and find out what the hell your system's based on before you write some stupid and, and ignorant and ultimately disgraceful response. Third, we did pray and confess as an act of true contrition our genuine remorse and penance for any unresolved debts, liens, or other financial encumbrances that previously prevented the lawful annulment of any records of events on your role and registers associated with us and our ancestral bloodline of children, parents, brothers, sisters, cousins, grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents. Now, I know we go on, and we could go on, but this is a significant event. And I probably changed the word remorse, uh, sorry, and penance to contr contrition there. So penance will be changed to contrition. But what we're saying here is this. When you do this, and you sacrifice your blood, blood being the ultimate currency under the reign of Mithra from the beginning, blood being the currency of their system, more valuable than gold, always. Ambrosia, the food of the gods, blood. They tell us that your blood sacrificed with the intent and the honor and the humility and the competence is strong enough not just to free you, but the absolute right to free all your children, your parents, your brothers, sisters, cousins, grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents from bondage, living or deceased, whether they are with you or whether you find that they are in prison. As restitution, just as the divine creator has absolved us and forgiven all our debts, we and our, and the immediate should be ancestral, ancestral bloodline, received absolution and acceptance of our payment in full through our solemn remittance from the treasury of one heaven by our sacred sacrifice and seal. Now, I know there's a lot of words there and there's some changes that need to be fixed, but it makes it clear, unmistakably clear, to anyone on their side that has an ounce of knowledge of how their system works, that by your seal, you have paid in full any outstanding debt and you have balanced the books on earth as the books are balanced in heaven. And if they want to keep going, then they're destroying their foundation. Let them destroy their foundation. But let's not pussyfoot around anymore. You have balanced the books by the most ancient of laws. 